why the T51R mod makes the turbo louder, and I'm also going to explain what anti-surge is. This is a compressor outling that does not have anti-surge. This one has anti-surge, but I also converted this to the T51R mod. This one is anti-surge, and this one is also anti-surge. But neither of these are truly a T51R mod, though this one here on the left is pretty close. This is a force performance compressor housing. It's from a TO4Z88HTA. So that one had a 63 millimeter compressor wheel. This is a Garrett compressor housing. This is a whole set one. Whole set precision. At least the guy told me it was a precision VS racing or something. This has a 78 millimeter compressor wheel, and I need to do an anti-surge on it, or I need to do a T51R mod on it. So I'm halfway through that, and I'm gonna show you the difference in the T51R, which causes the noise that everyone seems to like. This is the old version right here that I used, the way I used to do the T51R mod, is I wouldn't have, it would be just a completely flat surface, and I would go and machine the cover, but make I would make a stopping point for this piece to end up at so that I could determine the spacing of the anti-surge groove. The anti-surge groove is this this groove right here where you got the space there. So on this compressor housing factory it's 135 thousandths. The way that company OCD Works does them I've noticed that they have like 200 thousandths rather than 135. Now, with it taking off that much or leaving that much clearance, the negative about that is it's, it's allowing more air to escape, which could hurt performance. These things sticking up above this area, I think that is what causes the noise that everybody is wanting the mod for. Because when I did it like this, I did it for one guy's channel and you couldn't even hear the turbo very loud. I thought it was really unusual that that you couldn't even hear it because even this compressor housing without the T51R sounds loud like a T51R but just not as aggressive as the T51R. I had one guy tell me that the spacing here needed to be bigger so I did change that so the reason I did the spacing smaller was because I always copied this cover. This one has 135,000 or 130 thousandths on each side, and then this groove width is 130. On the T51R, they have 200 thousandths on each side, and then this groove width is 200 thousandths. But I'm afraid to go that extreme on that because of the loss of horsepower. The anti-surge fulfills a purpose. The purpose of the anti-surge is to reduce pressure when necessary when the turbo reaches a point where it's compressing more air in than can be removed on the exhaust side. So if there's so much pressure on the exhaust side that it's backing up, it's causing restriction all the way up to the exhaust valves where the cylinder head cannot c allow more compressed air to leave the cylinder head. That's where anti-surge comes into play. It helps reduce the pressure that's going in there to give that air an area to escape. So with the way OCD works does the T51R mod, it makes sense if it if it still makes horsepower. I'm kind of afraid that it will reduce some horsepower. I know people want the sound and everything, but I am kind of worried about it reducing horsepower. Now, the way I did this one is I bumped it up a little bit. So I bumped this one up to 148 thousandths. This one, I'm gonna go to 180, 180 thousandths, but I am not putting the groove so deep so if the groove width width of this groove is wider, you would want it to be closer to the top of the compressor wheel. But if it's more narrow, like a hundred thousandths, then you'd want that groove to be farther down towards the minor blade in the bottom here. The reason is because you're just 
moving the groove either up or down, which is going to limit what, how much pressure it's allowing to escape. So if the groove depth is farther down and it's wider as well, then you're going to remove a lot or allow a lot more air to escape, which could be a bad thing and hurt performance. So I tried to figure out like a place to put it where and width di dimension that isn't going to be overkill for it. That's not going to make this turbo make less power than it should. So I took a couple notes here just to kind of make it easy to remember what I was thinking. Well, if the groove width is too small, then it's not going to relieve as, not, as much pressure as it should, so it could still surge. But if the groove width is too big, then it's the possibility that you could have less horsepower and have a lack of spool. And the anti-surge is there to protect the turbo and prevent it from having a catastrophic failure. In some ways, like usually what would happen in that case if it's, is, as if it surged, most of the time it won't hurt the turbo, but if it was like a very extreme case, it really can. There's only one time that I remember where a customer had accidentally ran 52 pounds. He said it spiked for some reason. That turbo is only rated for 44, but what happened was it Based on looking at it, it looked like it actually had bent the shaft somehow, but it wasn't a like it wasn't a catastrophic failure. It just looked like the shaft needed to be replaced. But also it can rip off the blades of the compressor wheel, but that's like a really extreme case. It's kind of rare that the surge actually does damage the turbo from what I've seen, but it's probably because I haven't built the turbo to excess on the compressor side in comparison to the exhaust side. So if that turbo didn't have anti-surge, usually you have a smaller compressor wheel than the turbine side, or they're about the same size. The best way to build a turbo is to have a compressor wheel and turbine wheel about the same size, because what you're truly aiming for is to have about the same flow rates on the compressor side and its off side, which helps helps to pick up efficiency. Just a quick reminder, this is one of the 6.7 turbos I have available for the 6.7 Cummins. This has a 67 millimeter compressor and a 67 millimeter turbine. Factory is either a 58 millimeter compressor if you have the flatbed model of the truck, or if you have the normal model of the truck, then it has a 60 millimeter compressor wheel. So this is the last one for the T51R that I have available that's ready to go. This right here is the only piece I need to be able to finish three more T51R modded HE351VEs. So here's the last of the VEs that does not have the T51R mod. So this one is cheaper than the other T51R mod model VE turbos. So if you're wanting that one, you'll have to get up with me because that's the only one that I have available that doesn't have the T51R mod.